perfume for Ariel if you're in Europe or Tide to make the perfume from for Downy and Dawn and Pampers wipes and, 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 and you name it, you need a lot of fragrance. So actually it's a big mm. user of fragrance. Plus Procter and Gamble, that's another positive side. I work there. I don't have any more links. I don't have any stocks with them. So, but mm. I still like them very much. And I know for a fact, because I was there, they were very, very strong with ethics from the beginning. So, uh, perfume ethics, but also diversity uh, since the 80s. Uh, and me, mm. I was there. Anywhere in the world, you find all ethnicities, all skin colors in any creative centers at Procter & Gamble, in Belgium, in Cincinnati, in uh, England, in Kobe, Japan. In, uh, in, and they want people to rotate. And they, well, so, they have a very strict system of uh, hiring people. Uh, based on really the facts, not who you are or your skin color or your family. Mm -hmm. They have uh, fellowships to help people, which is very unusual in the French industry. They have fellowships to help the people that cannot afford to go study somewhere or to come somewhere for an internship. Um, so <clears throat> they don't count on you to work for free or, uh, as a summer student. It's already mm -hmm. planned and things. Wow. So, and, um, and they are big users of fragrances. So, um, uh, so there was that. Plus, as I say, in terms of fragrance ingredient, we were already very sustainable. Even when we say, maybe some people know, we use some petrol oil, crude oil, to make some fragrance ingredients. Now, what we use are the leftover of the car industry and the, mm. and the kerosene industry, the plane industry we don't extract from Saudi Arabia some crude oil just from the fragrance industry. The day that happens, that's fine. I, we we yeah. know how to extract the oil from the ground in a clean way. We know because we need tiny quantities. The fragrance industry is a tiny, tiny, tiny industry compared to any other industry. Mm -hmm. And so our quantities are pharmaceutical uh, in, uh, um, uh, quantities. We don't pollute, you don't need a tanker going from Saudi Arabia to Grass or to, or to New Jersey, where you have the chemical factories. Yes. No, <laughs> we use leftovers, <laughs> we use what they don't want. Uh, even for candles, the, the paraffin that we use, you know, the wax that you use in candles, um, we use the leftover. The paraffin is not good for planes and for cars, and so mm -hmm. we take that to burn. And it's not worse to burn paraffin than to burn a fire in your chimney or to burn soy wax, which is also a chemical, by the way. Huh? Soy mm. wax is not natural. It's mm. soil processed with chemicals to make a waxy thing. Mm -hmm. Now, and we don't destroy a forest. When you use soy wax, you destroy the forest, or you destroy cultures in the Midwest. When you use paraffin, you don't destroy anything. Huh? So mm. that's why it's a very clean thing. Mm. So, voila, so we're quite sustainable, and now we have what we call super, what I call super sustainable ingredients. And we have, for instance, patchouli, where we track with a GPS the farmers that go and bring their patchouli to the co-op uh, in the big city in Indonesia so that the farmers are really paid according to what they bring and not according to what the middle person is just gathering and stuff. We have um, wow. super sustainable, yes, super sustainable labels put on France ingredients that are extremely hard to get. Like now at IFF, they have a for life um, accredi uh, accreditation from EcoCert. And it's extremely hard to get even for the farmers. Right? Hmm. It's, um, it's hard to, it, it implies a lot of things. Of course, the ingredient is a bit more expensive, but it's really, really good. Um, it's even more good than good for the environment. So the conclusion is, I want people to know that in terms of background or uh, upstream, especially in France ingredients, you go online, you go on the website of IFRA, you go on the website of IFF, LMR, Firminich, uh, Bioland, Roberté, Simrise, and you see some videos about France ingredients. Think vanilla, think ylang ylang, think cinnamon, think iris, mm -hmm. think uh, you name it the rose, and these are not videos just for tourists. Uh, we don't have a thing just for tourists and a thing for the industry. We are too small. Mm -hmm. We only have one thing. Mm 
Mm. These are true, see, I get the goosebumps because these are true videos. If one day, well, it's not open to the public, but in fact, the, the, the plantations are open to the public because it's like a field. Huh? So you can go and see the rose fields. You will see, you will see the fields. You will see they are well-maintained. You will see who harvests. You will see, you might not go into the, the factory, but if you, I would say, if you're a big uh, uh, reporter, so whether you're an Instagram reporter or a journalist reporter, you can ask for a visit. You will be very welcome. Hmm. Because we want, as a French industry, to communicate the fact that we are sustainable and we have nothing to do with the problem, the issues of the fashion industry. Hmm. And so people should know that. And if you buy a fragrance with more natural, the farmers will get more money and the chemists will get more money. That is also a fact. Hmm. And so that's why the brand should communicate more about that. The public should demand to know how much rose there is in a fragrance. Maybe not all ingredients, but at least two or three key ingredients. Yes. Is there really one percent of rose oil in there so that I make sure it's benefiting the Turkish uh, or the Bulgarian farmers and not just 0.1 percent, which is a uh, uh, drop in the ocean? Yes. Yeah. But this is the beauty of the French industry. Uh, we don't communicate enough to the public because we don't sell B2C. We sell via the fashion brands and the fashion brands, they don't deal with that. It's not their thing. Mm -hmm. But so this, voila, look on the internet, those stories, they are beautiful and they are true. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a hurricane in Madagascar and all the vanilla is destroyed, well, then we should be able to help the vanilla farmers. Or when the grapefruit was destroyed in Florida with a hurricane, same, it was a big, a big trauma. So these are real stories. And they, I go, I go to all these places. I see the, they don't expect me. I don't, I just show up. Or, mm -hmm. bon, uh, I've seen quite a bit and it's quite fascinating. Uh, you see how they, if you go, to, I have not been to Egypt, but I know in Egypt, thanks to the uh, violet leaves and the jasmine, people can bring children to schools. Eh? If you go to the vetiver mm. in Haiti, it, 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 it helped building roads to the vetiver plantations. Uh, in Africa, the, the French uh, companies, they built wells so that there is enough water for the villages and of course for the vanilla or the, the different uh, plants that they plant there in Africa. So uh, like the ginger or... Um, uh, there are some other new plants in Madagascar and uh, they have, you have to bring the infrastructure if you want the plant to have enough water for you to have a good smell or enough oil. These are real stories. Mm. Uh, you cannot beat up people so that they weave more cotton uh, to make more patchouli. It won't work. The patchouli won't grow faster by beating up the people. No, that won't work. So, and, and if you don't have enough water, then you will have pitiful plants and pitiful yield and or it won't smell properly or et cetera, et cetera. So it's very, people should know these stories and we want to detach ourselves from fashion for that. Yes, and that is, that's news to me. I, I mean, no. just Procter & Gamble in general, I would have, first of all, I didn't realize, and maybe a lot of other people didn't realize, you know, how they are involved with perfumery in general, for one, but also the sustainability factor is being a major, uh, a major mission that's beautiful and just they are being extremely transparent strict in you know? terms of ethic and in terms of uh, even the industry being secretive you know so there are some arrangements that are not so uh kosher we say not so catholic in france and here you would say so <laughs> kosher, but, and everybody has their own um but uh they have some very strict rules also uh, between clients and suppliers and so that everything is really ethical and these rules also should be introduced in the fine finance industry because we don't have the mm. same uh thing same with reporting um well, people should disclose uh, presents or gifts that they get things like that uh, i know in the fine finance industry it is not like that at all mm. uh, so this should be implemented as well um, in terms, because we are going through this COVID thing, the finance industry was essential, an essential industry because even harsh products like Clorox or like, uh, which is another company, uh, mm -hmm. or like uh, Mr. Proper or, you know, all these cleaners, they require fragrance. And the fragrance is fully part of the formulation. 
And the fragrance in Mr. Proper or Mr. Clean, I don't know what it's called here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clean or Mr. Proper, yeah. The fragrance may have 20 to 40 ingredients. Eh? It's a real fragrance formula with a perfumer creating that formula. Oh, yeah. And then it has to smell a certain way. It has to be long lasting on the tiles or on the, on the, on the kitchen counter. Uh, it has to smell clean. It cannot smell perfumey because you think then the tile is not clean. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole know-how. Mm -hmm. And that's also why the French factories during the whole of COVID were always open, working full blast. And uh, so that's also a thing. And during COVID, they had to source the ingredients from everywhere. You cannot be missing one ingredient. Otherwise, you cannot make the fragrance. No, it's really, it's fascinating, basically. It's fascinating. Wow. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. <laughs> that yeah. Is... yeah. Wow. Um, you know, when you talk about reporting um when we're talking about ethics obviously we have you know that referring to those who are doing the creating actually coming out and saying what they are working with what is in it what are you getting when you're spending your money on this product um now i know there's a, a one of the major um elements of the code is the whistleblower right yeah. So now, now, in terms of us reporting on things that we see, you know, they always say, if you see something, say something, that kind of thing. How do you feel like that plays out into today's society, especially with social media being such a prominent source of communicating in regards to reporting and well, perfumery? So, uh, so the see something, say, uh, if you see something, say something, that's the thing, at least in the New York Metro, uh, mm -hmm. that's what they say. Uh, basically, if you see something dodgy happening in the Metro, please tell, uh, call 911 or tell someone. Uh, the whistleblowing, the, the French industry is more based in, on old fashioned practices from Europe. Uh, so all this uh, intrigue style stuff coming from Italy in the Renaissance style, uh, in, emphasized by what happened in France in the court, the courts of France of Louis the Fourteenth, Louis the Fifteenth. This has formed what we call the modern perfumery uh, and modern perfumery style and modern. Well, so some of those traditions we have are still based on that, and this intrigue and bro, or this village mentality. What we say. Um, we, we had a debate uh, among the, the, the people when we are doing this uh, code of ethic, and it's true, the enforcement of the ethical code is going to be a, an interesting part. Some people say, I don't want to be snitching. Some people say, well, it's true. At the same time, uh, some people have to raise flags when we see things that are not uh, okay. And it cannot be just covered. So yes. that's why whistleblowing is something that is, came from the US, and in Europe is still not well done or well covered or mm -hmm. even well protected. Mm -hmm. And the whistleblower in Europe is the one being pointed at and the people actually screwing others, actually the cool people. Huh? That's still like this a lot in Europe, I have to say. Well, at least I would say France and Mediterranean region, um, it's, yes, I'm very strong with this. Um, I know, for instance, in France, it's not cool to call the police. People will point at you if you're the one calling the police to protect you or your neighbors. And the cool guy is the one screwing others or being the, the bully. Eh? Mm. The, no, the bully, the, yeah, the bully. Yeah. the bully is a cool guy and the bullied is, oh, the poor, you know why he should defend himself. So that is still the mentality a lot in Europe and more. And this is not cool. This is not good for ethics and for honesty and for all that. So uh, that's going to be a debate, especially the SIPC right now is based in France. So we are going to have a debate about we have to enforce. It cannot just be otherwise there, there's no point in having a code if it cannot be enforced. Mm -hmm. So it's a good question how we should do it. And same in the reporting. So it could be someone from outside, so an Instagram or a reporter, we, or it can be someone from inside because as perfumers, we see a lot because the perfumers are the only one to see everything from the farmers to the creative side <laughs> because we are the only one to know what's inside. Eh? Us with a factory, 
we are the only one. Even the boss of the perfumers does not know what's inside the perfume, the, the, the formula, which is fine, eh? but mm -hmm. it's more, the perfumer have a very special position. Yeah. We decide what goes inside the fragrance, or we know what we can put, depending on the other parameters that we are given. And the other people that know are the factory and the regulatory people. But the factory does not know what is happening with the farmers, mm -hmm. and the factory does not know what's happening with the clients. But we mm -hmm. hear also what is required by the clients, what we are forced to do, or what we can do. So um, something that's to be to come from the people that have access to the actual information. Yes. So sometimes they say it can be a reporter, sometimes it can be a perfumer, sometimes it can be someone else. Huh? It can be uh, some salesperson, someone can be or a client, someone can be. So it all depends. Um, so it will be a debate. So I have it in the mm. code. How you do it? We don't know yet. What are the consequences? I don't know yet. How do we verify? I don't know yet. Right now we make a few phone calls or some people already told me, oh, Christophe, uh, I see this person. Uh, well, I observe and it's, uh, but we have to have this debate. The French industry is not used to that debate. Yes. Just to have the debate, some people are like, <clears throat> well, no, be and calm. And yes, we have to face those issues. Yes, in fact, I was going to ask you if you've received any significant resistance to this idea. No, 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 I don't know. Uh, I have not, well, the people I've contacted, they were, they were all uh, very positive about it, and they, some people had questions. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, and then, as I say, with the SIPC, they are totally in favor of it as well. And mm -hmm. so some things have to be, as, it's hard, it's hard to tell someone, no, we don't want any ethical code in the, in the corporation. <laughs> so that's going to be hard to justify. Now, um, um, yeah, I think, I think it's going to change some stuff. We have to bring it further now. We have to, to see how it can be implied in the larger uh, commercial projects, um, how it can be signed off by corporations and by perfumers, because it's two different things. We can have a corporation signing officially, but then how do you make sure every single perfumer around the world apply it? You know, it's mm -hmm. because, the, as I say, the enforcement of it is, uh, is quite tricky, but we have to start debating about it. Yes. I'm reading at the same time here. Yes, yeah, same here. I see someone was asking about perfume laws and wine laws. Uh, it looks like Anya was asking about No, but that. the wine, the problem with wine regulations, the wine regulations is more a food thing, right? In yes. wine, they don't really have the issue of composition of creation of the mind. So I would mm. not, what I was comparing with wine and whiskey was more quality criteria, yes. was more education. The public education is bringing uh, quality into uh, an industry and people spend more and spend more interesting um, for more interesting things. That's why I was comparing, but not for uh, ethics or copyrights. That makes sense. And I see Gabriella responded there, um, which makes sense. And uh, okay, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I imagine that's. If people a, want yeah, to yeah. ask the question again, because we missed some questions, so you yes, can write please. the questions if you have, we can look. Please feel free to retype. Because I, I think I, answered, I saw the question about quality. I think I answered that. Uh, quality, good fragrance. Uh, fragrance, long lastingness. Well, you know, there is not one recipe. Someone was asking that. It's very complicated. So there are yes. sometimes some tables that help you. But um, every note, imagine you play the piano and every note you play depends on the note you played with. So. Yes. The same is true in perfume. Uh, uh, depending on what other notes you have with vanilla, vanilla will, will taste different. Yes. Uh, but also same with long lastingness. Depending on the combination of notes, some notes will be longer lasting in an area, but not in another one. Mm. And what I want to debunk the myth about uh, put more wood, wood does not make a fragrance more longer lasting. I'm sorry mm. to say. Uh, we would know by now, and I would know very well because I have some like in Strange Love NYC. By putting more wood, you don't make it more long lasting. And in fact, it's not what sold long lastingness of those fragrances. 
and it's not about the quality of the wood uh, either. Uh, same with ambergris. It's not ambergris that makes everything long lasting. That's not true. Mm. Um, uh, it's very complex. Yes. And then even in angel, for instance, one, one green note is key in angel by itself is not long lasting, but with the other notes of angel is long lasting and it participates of the radiance of angel for so long. So it's, it's a tough one. We don't have a mm. one um, one recipe, but and that's yes. also why I know it's <laughs> I know it's a it's a quality criteria. When someone knows how to do something long lasting, it's it's good. It's good. Yes, yes. And thank you for debunking this, those things. You know, yeah. there's, there's always a lot of chatter and a lot of hypotheses out there about yeah. You know, and, and now some fragrance I like to have that I don't want to have long lasting. Yeah. So like there's one. <laughs> Um, like um, frankincense water. So that evaporates very fast, but I like that. I, I just mm. want to spray plenty. I know it won't last long. It won't disturb the, the rest of the day. Yes. Uh, so consciously, we yes. also like things not longer lasting. Eh? Um, but um, well, that's how I would say. Yeah. Any advice for someone trying to start a perfume brand? Oh, but that's a tough one. I mean, it's like asking... Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is you have to read books. You have to. I don't know. It's too long. That should be the subject of another. Yeah, of another. Example. Yes, and uh, reading. It's and, like, how do you start a fashion brand? Well, oh, it's a very long. I mean, connecting so with way, people who do are doing it. How you start a, a new restaurant? How do you? St and you you have to learn how to be a chef, and you want to start a restaurant. It's a big. It's a big. Uh, there are many many elements. Yes, and meeting people who are doing it, if you can. I mean, that's always great. Um, I see Carlos asked, don't you think that sharing a perfume formula or part of the formula is the best way to prevent a copycat? So that's a good point too. Mm -hmm. huh? So that's a good point too. In mm -hmm. fact, there are a few formulas that, um, 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 yeah, no, that's true. Uh, we, uh, well, I've published a few formulas to educate the public. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I know Saskia in LA, uh, the Institute of Art and Olfaction, we are going to have more and more open source uh, data to, be, to share, to educate the public and to educate young perfumers too. Huh? We want young perfumers to learn on more modern and factual things. So I think every perfumer should disclose some formulas. Now, uh, it could also be a, a way to do that. At the same time, when you publish something, but there's no copyright, mm -hmm. um, yes, you could point out to someone, say, oh, they just made a copy, but there's no enforcement. That's they wouldn't right. have to pay royalty. Huh? So they would be like, that could be a public shaming, saying, well, I mean, you see, it just took the formula of Christophe and then they, but then fine, and then people still buy it. Yes. But it's a good debate. It's a good debate sometimes, you know, you, I don't know, that's a good point. I don't know what it to is. say here. You know, it's like when I think of a formula that is pretty well known, I mean, the Aventus formula, like it's gotten to the point where there's so many copies. So where once you just, you just glance at the note breakdown. You already know. It's like, okay, uh, uh, I see uh, the patchouli and vanilla and pineapple and apple and black currant and, and ambergris. You just, you see it all. It's like, okay. And it's like, at that, at that point, it just becomes blatant. It's like, okay, uh, 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 they are trying to do it. And they know that people will buy it because it's only $35, you know? So it's like, what, what can you do? But yeah, the enforcement of that and copyright, that is so interesting the idea that you can create a formula and once it is complete you lock it in as one entity and copyright it i mean what do you feel like we would need to do that is there is there an like a governing body that exists already that we can do that with or we have to create some kind of new branch <laughs> ah, but well, I, so it's, that was exactly my question with the other yeah. people that I'm uh, discussing the ethical uh, thing with, is like, I, we need a governing, we need a, a body to hold the code of ethic. Yes. We need a body to do the enforcement. I don't want to be the one, uh, it's not for me. Me, I'm starting the thing because I want this to be out there. And we have to decide who should be the guardian. So for the perfumers, we think it's going to be the Society, the International Society of Perfumers. Uh, 
for uh, the other people, we don't know yet who, sh who that body should be. And then how do you enforce that? Who can judge? Who can compare to formulas? How do you? Yes. Well, it's tricky in music. Uh, it's tricky in movies, in movie scenarios already. We see when they say, oh, they stole my story for that movie. We know how it's very tricky. Mm. So it's going to be a learning process. Yes, but yes. we have to start somewhere. But I don't know. I don't know. Yes, it's not perfect. Um, mm. You know, and I guess there could be a, a fine line between inspiration and, and mimicking, you know. Uh, so and, right now, yeah. there are some brand copy. Like right yes, now, exactly. I know because I've done it, I've to take on a perfume. Uh, if you take the Mont Blanc Legend, you, you make the GC, you take the formula of Abercrombie, which I know very well, you compare, there's no doubt, zero, yes. that it is a copy. There is no yes. doubt. A copy and they added fluff to, make, to confuse the enemy, as we say in French. Mm -hmm. And but there's no doubt they didn't even change some ingredients to the Givaudan quality. But anyway, it's very like, like <laughs> but, so. Uh, and there are a few others like that. So yes, uh, and then we know we know because I know some perfumers. That's how they create. I know some perfumers. Mm -hmm. That's how they create. They take a copy of a fragrance and they make another one. And they don't know any other way to create. I know that for a fact. So mm. what are you going to do with these perfumers once you say, we don't do this anymore because they have mm. never created another way. Well, that's going to be another, tr another trouble, but well, it's not my trouble, but yeah. yeah. So it's really, really entrenched. So we have to stop doing this. Yes. Yes. Let's see, uh, music is notes, perfume, notes, copyright, just like ASCAP. Yeah, we need we need an enforcer. You know, that's what it comes down to, I suppose, and a way to verify, as you had said before. So, mm. um, already to have this whole system, some people will think twice before doing it bluntly. Yes, Plus, it means it, I have to say, if you have a famous song, and uh, a number one song, someone doesn't come to you and tells you, "Oh, please, can you write me the same song?" You don't do that usually. I don't think so. We know there are some instances where songs usually they are trying, like 10 years later, there's another artist picking a song and uh, didn't say where it's from, but then people noticed. But usually yes. it comes after a while. Yes. It's not like there's a number one. In perfumery, there's a number one. Oh, I guarantee you within two months, someone comes and they want the same and they, no, 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 we have to stop all that. No, mm. you have to be creative and make sure your new creation becomes a new number one. Yes. Not by copying the number one. You want a totally different style that becomes a new number one. So, uh, yes. Uh, voilà. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I no, agree. it's true. It's I true. Agree. It's a, you know, it's very weird that we have this in perfumery. It's very weird. It is strange that it is not held to the same standard. Um, when it, it is art, it is creation, and it is coming from the creative minds. But the idea that once it comes into the world, it's unprotected. Plus, plus, if you, like Jason Derulo at the moment has a number, I think has the number one. We had it like what is it, Savage Love or something like that. So, can you imagine going to Lady Gaga and say, "Can you uh, please?" Or Lady Gaga coming to you, the songwriter, and Lady Gaga saying, please, can you make me the same song as uh, Savage Love from Derulo? Just change two notes and... Uh, no, because <laughs> the first thing people will say, but you're not Derulo. You're not, you're not going to sing the same tonality. You're not, it's not your style. Yes. Uh, Lady Gaga is going to, to, sound, to sound like hip hop or rap or whatever now, you know, or, or like uh, R&B. No, you know what I mean? People will say, but that's not you. And even Lady Gaga would not come to the idea to have the same style as... So, uh, now we know that one song she had was a bit close to the Madonna thing, but it's yeah. say, like 10 years later, and it happens once in a while. But, but a brand, like if a brand comes to me and they, they've come to me and they say, oh, can you make the fear of Abercrombie? But I say, but you're an Abercrombie. So let's make something cool about you, but why do you want the fears? You're not Abercrombie, but no, people don't react this way. It's a very mm. commodity style instead of being a creative style industry. Uh, yes, I would say, yes. I would say three quarter of the way it's based at the moment is still commodity style, merchandising style, voilà. um, 
and uh, where you just write a new brand name. Well, as I say, the, yes. yeah, we have to change that. So we have to have initiatives to change that. And, and Yes, I see Vareo Perfumes wrote, you know, how can we encourage more creativity? Um, mm. I think, you know, even ha like you said, having the debate alone, like the, just the very idea of, of creating this, of making this yeah. a, ma a physical manifestation in the world, or, I mean, obviously there's no enforcement yet, but the yeah. fact that it's out there, yeah, everyone can out. see it and you see it and it just makes you think critically about yourself. As you said, you know, we have to, yeah, once people see it, it's very blunt and it's like, oh, okay, so they're looking now or someone's yeah, looking out. now, you know, and I obviously think... educating the public is big too. That's also what's new with the, um, we used to have bloggers, but they were less educated at the beginning when blogging started. I don't know if it was like 15 years ago or 20 years ago even. And then I have to say now that's also new, the, whether you call it Instagrammers, bloggers, call it the way you want, people are more and more educated. And so I know the brands, uh, even the French Foundation, I, I've noticed too, they know that they are watched and they know that people will be more vocal. That's also the thing, people were not saying anything before in the French industry. First mm -hmm. of all, there was no platform, but also, uh, uh, bon, and Vogue magazine, Cosmopolitan magazine, they are not into these things, so they were not doing investigations like that. And, uh, but now there are enough platforms where people can be vocal about what is done and stuff. And so uh, exactly what you say, now that this is out there and they see that people are more educated, they, they know so they will have to be more careful. And so now the next thing I want is people to be more vocal about ingredients and the public has to ask, okay, who am I helping here? Where is my budget going when I'm buying this fragrance? Yes. And uh, I need to explain more about where does the money go when someone buys a fragrance? People should know because mm. I think people have no idea. <laughs> and yes. yeah, it's true, it's true. And um, uh, brands in fashion like Everlane or in candles like Keep Brooklyn in candles, they explain when you buy a candle, uh, keep, I've done all the fragrances, so I know them well, and they explain that, but Everlane, uh, it's, a fa it's a fashion brand, they show the factories in Peru, in Vietnam, and they mm. show pictures, they show, but they also show the breakout, if you buy a shirt for $80, you have $20 that goes here, you have $10 that go there, you have, they show that. So fashion brand, uh, perfume brands should do the same. Mm. And and I need to show right now what it is so that it, it's better because it's the proportion that goes to the farmers, the perfumers, the chemists, and the factories is ridiculous. It's ridiculous mm -hmm. for something where everybody says it's about art and about perfumery with capital P. And I'm not saying I want more. I'm saying we have to go from ridiculous to fair. Well, that's what I'm saying right now. When it goes too far, we can debate. But right now, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I need to explain that. <laughs> yes. And then we do. Yes, that's a good place to start, <laughs> for mm. sure. I see Alec has said, uh, are arbitration rules possible for the fragrance community? For example, formula and scent profile released only behind closed doors between committee arbitrators to settle disputes and allegations of copying. That's a very good, that's a very good uh, suggestion, actually. Uh, uh, but with analysis, we could already see quite a bit if two formulas are similar. And with yes. the analysis, you get a lot of information. Uh, but another uh, possibility, uh, we haven't thought so much yet about arbitration. But that could be another possibility where we say it could be that, okay, show us the exact formula. And um, 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 no, it's true. That could be mm. maybe makes even things easier. Uh, that's true. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think the most people are resistant, the, the more it means it's dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too. Yes. 
Um, no, I now, agree. coming back to Carlos, it's true also. One thing at PNG that we learn is that because PNG, they patent also a lot of technologies. They were saying, you know, when you're copied, it means you're always at the forefront. Exactly. So because you're already on the next thing, but still, you still have to to profit for some things you brought on the market. And, and I think it's true in every art. I think for the life of the artist, plus, plus 70 years after the, the death of the artist, I think, mm -hmm. people are protected and people uh, get some fruit, whether it's royalties or whatever, from that creation. So there's no reason why we should not have the same uh, story for us. Or for the mm -hmm. perfume house, I'm, I'm just saying, if the formula belongs to IFF or Feminish, when you employ it there, but just like if the article belongs to the New York Times, well, the New York Times should get the fruit of that article for a while. So it should be the same for the perfume industry. I agree. I see some questions coming in, some thoughts. It might get tricky with formulas being weighed in grams and such, but I'm sure we'll get it percentage yeah. that's pretty accurate yeah yeah this is you no know, it's not a problem percentage or grams is the same mm. because the percentage what's the percentage it means per cent means per hundred eh? mm -hmm. cent is a hundred in French mm -hmm. per hundred something so percentage is per hundred grams uh, we do all in grams we don't do in volume anymore mm -hmm. but yeah so it's per hundred grams per hundred kilo per hundred milligrams is the same that's what it means it's mm -hmm. the same eh? yes um, voilà. Okay. So, well, Chris, well, I, th I hope it inspires people. Yes. I mean, again, even the debate is, it's profound. It, you know, just make, just really having critical eyes on the industry in this way, even if there's nothing we can do to change what people do or, or, you know, at least the conversations um, can well, also encourage. you can encourage. always inquire. Yes. You can always inquire. The first answer, I guarantee you, will be, we do not communicate about <laughs> Canada. And then you have to insist. Yes. You say, no, but I'm sorry, we cannot be trusted. Tr we cannot, it cannot be trusted. We need to know. And I guarantee you, uh, so some brands will start communicating more. And I think smaller brands, me, I know. Well, first I do it on my, they're not even my brands, but I know when I say there is 4%, natural daffodil in the strange love nyc mm -hmm. i did not ask them if i can say it i know they like me to say that i'm not going to say the old formula but to give some really hard data like that i know it helps to make a difference with yes. other you know so now even big brands will have to open about that and when they don't it means it means lenders just don't go there mm. and so the public True. has to ask there is no reason why we can if you buy a dish with truffle and the dish is $30 more expensive because it has truffle or lobster. Eh? And then the dish comes and you don't see one truffle or one lobster. You'll be like, excuse me? Yes. So you can say, yeah, but it's all pureed. And you'll be like, <laughs> hey, give me a break. So you yes. will trust, however, the chef that you've trusted before because he or she gave you more information. That's and you right. say, yeah, because in a particular dish, I guarantee you there is 10% truffle, but it's true. It's pureed with other stuff because you be like, okay, I believe this. But you know, you have to have a process. Mm. It has to start somewhere. To and inquire. so here now, and we have to have those farmers everywhere. We have to have the chemists and we have to have the perfumers. I'm sorry. We have to be treated like other entities. Yes. So that's the force of the public now is, let's say we need semi-transparency we yes. could call it, and we need hard data, and we need to know where those dollars are going. And then people can choose better. And anyway, some brands will do it. Uh, and the fashion yeah. brand will have a harder time because in a bottle of Armani, in a bottle of Jimmy Choo, there's one dollar that goes back to the perfume oil. Huh? So goes the perfumer and the factory and the quality control and the logistic department and the farmer and the chemist is all paid by this one dollar in a $65 uh, perfume. Yes, people should know that. When you, you know serious? that, you know that we are not asking for luxury or, or we are not, no. In a $65 perfume bottle, there should be $5 going to 
all together, the perfumer and the farmers and the chemist and the factory and the logistic. I think that's not too much asking. No, and five huh? seems too low. Voilà. So, <laughs> but if you tell them instead of one dollar, give us two dollars, they, they, they open arm and they say it won't work, the business model. No, so then you buy, then don't buy from the fashion brands. So that's why we need to establish some things like that. I know some people are going to kill me for this, but it's oh. enough now. I think we, we deserve the same as music and painting and cooking and, and architecture. And, and, and we want more for the ingredients and we want more for the perfumers. The perfumers, they need also more time researching new structures. You don't invent new structures every day if you just have to scramble, scramble, scramble. So yes, it is more expensive to pay perfumers to do just searching. And so that's part of it. Um, mm. No, we have to modify this a bit. Yes, $1, I said, I actually, I published that already, like maybe 10 years ago in Women's Radio, people didn't register, but I think now people are, are uh, ready for that. And as I say, Everlane, they explain how the, their dollars are spread. Uh, Key Brooklyn, the candles, they explain. More and more sustainable brands explain that. Uh, the wine, if you know Naked Wine, go on to nakedwine.com and they explain also that, how that works. Mm. So I want to take that model and explain how this is split in perfumery when in between you have, a, a, it's not the fragrance house. It's not I feel feminist, God bless them. Mm -hmm. They are really, um, um, really um, squeezed, but it's the group yes. in between. There is L'Oreal in between, then yes. there is Armani, and then there is the store, Macy's. Yes. Huh? And then it goes to the consumer. Yes. So Macy's, Armani, L'Oréal, they get the big tranche. And yes, Armani has a big selling power, so fine. But well, people should know all that. And then they can decide. And I think there is room for another style of um, uh, splitting the, the knowledge and the know-how and the ingredients. Because we can see how the ingredients are damaged or how we could use much more. Every perfumer wants to use more ingredients, more valuable ingredients. That's, every perfumer yes. wants more of that. And yes. I think we can achieve that. I think so too. And I think mm -hmm. this is the beginning of a very necessary new era and paradigm. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you just kind of putting yourself out there with your platform, with your experience and fearlessly declaring what is right and what is not. So thank you. Christophe. Yeah, I think it's, well, I don't like excesses. And some things we can debate, but some things are really uh, excessive or too extreme and we should correct that. Yes, totally. Thank well, you, thank you. Yes, Christophe, thank you for everything. Thank you for just sharing just uninhibitedly. We mm. appreciate your insight and your opinion. And <laughs> it, it well, well, it, thank it, you for organizing yes. this. I hope it helps people a little bit. And bon, me and my son, I need to write more about this so that we diffuse this more. Um, uh, so bon, that's my plan. I've started to uh, write some things down, but I need to make it in a consistent document and things. So it's a little bit, uh, yes. takes a while, but voilà. Yes, this is the beginning, I suppose. And, uh, yes. you know, thank you, Gabriella, for help making this thank possible. Thank you, really yes, appreciate thank you, Gabriella. You. And thank you everyone for watching and commenting. Really appreciate your viewership. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye. So we'll bye. sign off. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, son. Yes. Bye.